Hey guys, so today I am going to beat up on collector's cases or boxes some more. Um, basically what I need to say is uh, forget the price for a moment in time. Forget what the cards cost in the set. So let's just imagine every magic card has the same exact value, uh, 10 cents or whatever it costs to print. 2 cents, 1 cent. Which would you rather have? Would you rather have a product of 12 packs or a product of 36 packs? Assuming each pack has the same number of cards. Again, all of the cards in the pack are the same value. You would say 36, right? Wouldn't you? Now, what would you rather have? Um, would you rather pay $300 a booster box or 100? You would say, oh, well, the one with 12 packs probably costs $100, and the one with 36 packs, because it's three times as much, probably costs $300, right? You would be wrong. It's the opposite. And essentially, what Wizard of the Coast did was they took, they created an additional secondary market. So the 12 packs cost $300. That's what they were selling for. That was what... Front of the Eldoran was selling for by popular YouTubers at the time. Uh, Pharos Beyond Death, for instance, um, popular YouTubers would, or YouTuber said that this was a great investment and he was going to buy 500 of this product and he was going to try to get 1,000 and he was going to sell some to his patrons. It's got to be one of the worst investments I've ever seen. I, I cannot imagine a more poor use of money than buying Pharaohs Beyond Death collectors. Again, the math simply, I mean, you're getting less packs and you're paying, so you're getting one third as few packs, you're getting 33% of the packs and you're paying 300% the price. So if you do the math, that's a 10 times multiplier, right? To get 36 packs of collector's edition, you need to buy free boxes at $300 a piece, which is where they came out at. Pharaohs Beyond Death, there were multiple examples of people buying. I think over 25 people or 28 people bought Pharaohs Beyond Death for pre-order at $350 a box, which I have on YouTube and screenshot it for you. Ikoria is just, it's going to be much worse because not, I don't think, I think Ikoria is going to be a great set. I think Ikoria will be much better than Pharaohs Beyond Death. Uh, typically, second sets are not really good um, for the collector's market. Like, if you really consider, uh, we had the Zendikar lands, right? They were really good, and then we had uh, less good Zendikar lands that didn't have fetch lands, or I would call them utility lands, right? Like, Wasteland was an uh, Oath of the Gatewatch, but... I mean, you, all your shock lands, all your fetch lands, all the really good stuff was in the first set. So that's where we are right now. I, I didn't expect Pharaohs Beyond Death to be really good, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. And with standard, remember, all these cards are standard cards. If you can't play Paper Magic, standard is what suffers the most because your ED8 deck still still going to be playable. It's eternal. ED8s is e e an eternal format. Standard is not. Standard rotates. When rotation hits, you're going to lose 90% of your value maybe. Maybe if you're lucky. There might be a few cards that you have that will be EDH playable or tradable into EDH players. But that's about it. So you're seeing 170. You're seeing, I mean, as of this recording... 170 I could see like I said 160 I think it's possible remember eBay takes a 13% fee and then if you ask free shipping then you also get I don't know let's just call it 20% the dude is probably breaking even or losing money on this product and that's it if people are willing to sell a product to lose money on it that's all you need to know about the product I have been very, very vehemently against this product just from simple math. You get three times less booster packs and you get, which is insane already, and you're paying three times as much money. 
forget that the fact that the cards in here are more expensive. Just assume that magic cards have a zero value because that's my, what might happen in the future. Why are mag why is one magic card more expensive than the other magic card when they do exactly the same thing? Collectors, collector build, but like who's driving this collectability market? They they look gross. Tolarian Community College rightfully pointed this out, and I give him credit because I didn't expect. I didn't notice, and I didn't expect it to be from him. The extended art is just blown up pictures of their original art. There's no extension. They just made the original art a little bit more, um, less pic more pixeled. That's so lazy, guys. That's like... So Wizard of Coast wanted to produce a product, give its consumers three times as less cards, so they would need to buy more cards. And then they would jack up the price 300%. That's not going to work because your consumer, especially... So it kind of reminds me of WeWork. Um, WeWork, you can Google it. It's like a dumb company. And during good times, it seems less dumb. But during a recession or a pandemic, it seems really dumb that anyone would ever want to invest in a company like that. It went from $47 billion down to 7 or $9 billion. And that was before the pandemic. And now the uh, dumb Japanese bank who wanted to give them free money is no longer able to give them free money because they're another company they invested in, a satellite company bankrupt. During good times, this was a dumb idea. The collector's boxes were not a good investment during good times. So imagine what they are right now when people are scrapping for food and scrapping for jobs. I mean... We are in a full-blown job crisis. If you still have a job right now, consider yourself, be grateful you still have a job because not everyone's going to have a job. I, and you don't, need to, you don't need to argue with me on this one. You can just look at the numbers. Look at un the unemployment numbers for a week. It was 3 million unemployed in one week, guys. Holy blank. That's like 10% of our working population, maybe more filed for unemployment in one week. And let me tell you why this is the case, because um, our economy is optimized. So there's drop shipping, right? There's these optimal ways to do things now. So you don't need stock and inventory. You don't need extra employees. You can file, you can work remote. There's so many things you do not need that you used to need 20 years ago because of the internet and everything is more efficient. But because it's efficient, um, we're in this, you know, Wizard of the Coast thought they could milk Magic players for all the money they had this year. But they weren't predicting, and no one, no one was predicting a pandemic, right? I mean, come on. Come on. That, that's not, like, no one could predict this. I don't care what MTG Finance crew you are. No way you predict this happens. And yet they pushed their most expensive product. I mean, I can look at Secret Lair. Secret Lair is not a cheap product, by the way. I think it's a product for good value. But I don't. it's definitely not a cheap product. The Secret Lair Ultimate Edition? What is the suggested price? $168, $69, something like that. But it's probably going to sell at your store for $200, $220 maybe. Mystery Booster Packs? Jumpstart? Which are just reprints? Like you, they made a huge, colossal mistake this year. And we haven't even seen the EDH good stuff yet. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we get like an EDH set or something really big over the summertime. Look, if this continues on, Wizard Coast just screwed itself hardcore because it took every cent it could from its players. Collector's editions, it is meant to dry you up. It's meant so you don't have cash anymore. It gives you shiny cards and it gives you all this foils and all this value. And people say, oh, you know, it's such a great buy. And you, I'm, I'm buying a thousand of them. You too should buy a thousand collector's edition to drive up the price, right? This is the worst product at the worst time I've seen of a magic product. And I live through Homelands. Everyone knew Homelands. Was bad. You know, Ice Age was a really bad set. And I remember a lot of people, because McKaydee Mask was great. I remember McKaydee Mask in elementary and middle school. And I thought that was a great set, even though it was much weaker. So we had Urza Saga in elementary school. Then we went to McKaydee Mask. 
Nemesis, um, avatars. I remember I had an avatar deck with Belps Portal from uh, Nemesis, and I would just throw out my avatars one by one. And then, came, you know, I, I mean, but a lot of the player base was lost around Ice Age, and Urza Saga is the one you know that kind of brought everyone back. Then McKinney Mass was kind of a dud. McKinney Mass, Nemesis, and Prophecy. They were not great sets. And they're still not good sets today. In 2008, there's a reason no one has Lower Wind, Morning Tide, Evening Tide. I had boxes of it because I was in college and whatever, right? I mean, you're in college, you have student loans that you don't realize at the time you have to pay back wides. I too was a wedge in college. I did not realize that the, the free money would eventually stop flowing and they would, somebody would charge me interest on it. Okay, I paid back my student loans. But uh, at the time, obviously, I did not realize that I should not be buying magic cards with my student loans. Uh, and 2008 happened. I was at NYU. I graduated December 2008. So the year that I graduated, even though I graduated half a semester early because I did study abroad, was the worst year to find a job. And now we've repeated ourselves 12 years later. I just, it, it's a luxury item of a luxury item. There's no other way I can put it. And when, when things are good, you can, you can milk people for that. But when things are bad, there's no way anybody's buying this crap anymore. And finally, people are starting to see how bad this product is. One third less cards not able to draft. I mean, you would buy, have to buy three times as many packs to draft this. And on top of that, it's three times more expensive. Terrible product. 